alcohol, puking, blood, and there was some praying, too. <laughs> well, I better get moving. I think I'm supposed to be working today. I'm not that crazy. I quit playing that machine years ago. I only keep it for its ornamental value and because I can't move it. Nah, I like it where it is. Why would I take the alarm clock with me? Ah, why on earth would I take a sock? Let's just leave it there. Nah, I don't need that right now. Oh, I'm not going to get any closer. What if something attacks me? Ooh, hot news. I like it where it is. I'm not going to open the window now. There's only noise out there. Mortimer, I'm off to work. Oh man, is that my hangover? Or is death knocking at my door again? Whoever you are, I just want you to know I have my father's gun and a scorching Randall case of Randall Hicks, herpes. cut the shit and open the door. Mr. Marconi? Well, it sure may publish his clearing house. Open this door. Oh, whew. I'm so glad it's you. But please, don't ever do that again. God damn it, Hicks. Do what? Scare me like that. I nearly turned my Fruit of the Looms into a fudge factory. Damn, Cannelloni. Did you just call me Cannelloni? Oh, come on, listen. I've had a terrible night. I swear somebody was whispering in my ear over and over that I'm cursed. I'm fairly certain I pissed in my closet again. Oh, do you know what day it is? No, oh, no. Are you gonna try and get that ferret out of the plumbing? Because I don't know if I can stomach staring at your hairy ass crack all day. Very funny. Your rent takes. As usual, you're late. I don't see my money. Neither do I, Mr. Marconi. But come on, it's only a couple of days late. No big deal. You owe me three months. Oh. Well, there must have been some kind of problem with the paperwork. Damn bureaucracy. 
Let me talk to my financial advisor. I'll get back to you as soon as I can. Ah, Hicks, you need a financial advisor like I need ballerina shoes. That's lame. Well, what about the time I tried to pay you in gold coins? Those were bottle caps painted gold. Took me three weeks to get the paint off my hands. Mr. Marconi, I've been meaning to talk to you, but I don't think you're gonna like what I'm about to say. I'm sure I won't. I have the feeling we're growing apart. What are you talking about? I've met someone else. I mean, don't get me wrong, I still love you and all, but I just don't think this is gonna work out. What the hell? Please, don't say anything. It's better to end now before desire takes over. Just hold me for one last time. God damn it, just give me my damn money. I'm sick of you. Mr. Marconi, I have a problem. You were born with a problem. No, I wasn't. The thing is, my job's been getting me down lately. I'm being exploited, you know? There are always hundreds of orders that have to be delivered on their due date and in perfect condition. And do you know what the worst part is? I don't care. The customers, they're only worried about themselves. They never thank me or say, have a nice day. They treat me like dirt, you know? Like I have no feelings. They always say things like, the package is smashed, the package shouldn't drip. This is not the address you're looking for. Is it too much to ask that they just sign for their damn delivery and keep their smashed packages? Randall. Yes, Mr. Marconi? You work for the town's worst courier service, and you spend more time trying to think of ways to get out of work than you do actually working. Whoa, 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 Mr. Marconi, that's not entirely true. It is entirely true. Randall, you're like a son to me. You know what that means, don't you? That in next Sunday's game, I'll be looking anxiously around the crowd when my team wins, hoping to see you, but you won't be there, and I'll die a little inside. Jesus H. Christ, your parents must feel like schmucks for feeding you and cleaning your cage so long. Thank you, Mr. Marconi. You're like the father I always wanted. This year I'll make you a special card for Father's Day, with macaroni and glitter. Oh, you wear me out, Hicks. You could learn something from that roommate of yours, Mortimer. Now there's a real hard work. What are you talking about? The guy hasn't come out of his room for months. Mortimer is the perfect tenant. He keeps it down and never gives me any trouble. All you do is make my life miserable. Mr. Marconi, we already had this conversation, and I promised you, no more megaphone after 10 o'clock. And as far as I know, Mortimer doesn't even speak our language. Leave him alone. You should try and be more responsible, Hicks. Eh? Do something with your life, for God's sake. Yeah, yeah, in a minute. By the way, you said you'd give me back my megaphone. I want my money now. Now that you mention Mortimer, he's the one that should have paid. Oh. Oh, I just had what alcoholics refer to as a moment of clarity. I gave my half to Mortimer last week. That's enough, Hicks. Your roommate is a busy man, so leave him out of your lives. Go back in there and fix this. I'm not moving from here until you pay up. You know, Mr. Marconi, there's this rumor spreading that you've got so much money that you don't know what to do with it all. What? Do I look like a rich man to you, Hicks? Well, now that you mention it, you kind of look like you should be living in a garbage can. Very funny, Hicks. You know what? One call and I can have you turned into fish food. Nah, I'm not really fond of marine fauna. But if there's one thing that's clear, it's you're a wealthy man. So you won't even notice if I don't pay you this month either. Hicks. All right, Mr. Marconi, I'll see what I can do.
Mortimer. The landlord was just here. He said something about debt and something about ripping off body parts. So please, get out of your crypt so we can figure this out. Oh yeah, and he said he hates you. Mortimer, cut it out and give me the money or you're gonna wake up tomorrow with my head in your bed. And you'll be next. Because when I tell him you've been writing Mrs. Marconi love letters, you're going down too, buddy. I didn't get a single word of that. I think we made it clear with that one growl means no, two growls means yes. You just made me want to break down the door and stomp on your head. Wait a second. Three growls now? Dude, we said two means yes, one means no. But three? What's that all about? Mortimer, I'll never understand this language of yours. Can we please go back to Klingon? Oh, I'm not gonna get any closer. What if something attacks me? I'm not cleaning that. That's Mortimer's job. It's always Mortimer's job. I don't think dressing up in green and going on a quest to find the Triforce is going to be of any help. At least not for the moment. escape, huh? Yeah, good idea. I like that metallic noise they make. Makes me feel safe. What the hell was that? Was that the fire escape? Maybe we should think this through. Although, I bet it's not as frightening as old Marconi's hairy vein. Maybe it is. Judging by that noise, I'd say there's some scary-ass creature in that alley. Whoa, whoa, seriously. I'm relatively too young to die. Whew. Okay, I'm gonna die here. But at least I will look death in the eye and say, I'm not afraid of you! this over a stupid filthy cat well that's embarrassing luckily no one saw me except for the cat and mrs. Grozer of course I'm afraid to touch her what if she turns out to be a ghost meow a stupid flower pot you want me to take that as well why I can't reach it. Wow, look at that. And I still have some wire left. That makes no sense. If you find that logical, you should stop playing and go rest for a while. I 
I can't reach it. No way. The extendable duck is for serious business only. I don't want to start a fight. That animal looks dangerous. I think I'd better keep it. Ah! Phew, perfect. I got rid of that stinking cat and now the coast is clear. Things are looking up. You're cursed. Huh? You're cursed! Um, what now? Cursed! Cursed? So that wasn't my imagination after all. You're cursed! Aw, oh, man. Was that you in my ear all night? I had a hell of a night because of you. Worst night since I ate that three-year-old jar of mayonnaise. Wait till I get down there! You're cursed! That does it. No one curses Randall. Bye-bye, Mrs. Grozer. Say hi to Mr. Grozer. You're cursed! Shit! What are the odds? Whew, that was close. I feel like I'm gonna puke my heart out. Whew! This must be what freedom tastes like. You're cursed! Easy, easy. I haven't forgotten about you. Let me just check and make sure everything is where it should be, then I'll decide whether to face you or get the hell out of here. Just after I throw a rock at your face or something. Carrying a trash can around is not something I want to do. What do you think, I'm gonna fix it or something? Huh. Come here, boy. Come on. Come to daddy. Eh, he's not paying me any attention. I don't think I'm gonna find anything useful in there. earth would I pick up a broken flower pot from the floor? Just leave it there. So, you're a bum, huh? And who are you? What? You don't even know I'm the victim of your nighttime screaming? I think you're a mistake. The cat went that way. You're the one I'm looking for, bum. Your days of cursing people are over. Wrong again! I am no bum. Of course you are. And with an obvious drinking problem, I'd say. Boy, you couldn't be more wrong. I'm a businessman, and I only drink energy drinks. Oh, well excuse me, Gordon Gecko. I didn't know this was your office. Be careful when you get out onto the street. You don't want that nice suit getting dirty. Ah, oh, low blow, kid. Running a business is no walk in the park, you know. If you want to be someone in life, you gotta start at the bottom. Yeah, well, you got the edge there, because this is rock bottom. Besides, everybody knows drunk people always tell the truth. So if you say I'm a drunk bum that says he's not a bum, but really he is, wouldn't that be paradoxical, Mr. Smiley Pants?
I don't want to rain on your parade or anything, but if I put the cursor over you, it says bum. Okay, maybe I'm a business bum. Are you interested in a retching cat? Oh boy, poor old man. The alcohol's pickled your brain. Listen, your problem is that you haven't been with a girl in a long time, if ever. Am I right? Listen, bum, I've got two words for you. Shut the fuck up. They say a little knowledge is a dangerous thing, but what of the man who possesses too much knowledge? Well, he won't end up living in an alley, that's for sure. So where did you learn that saying anyway? On a TV show or something? No. You mean yes? No. Oh, really? Because I think I heard that one on the scary door last week. I said no. Us bums don't watch sci-fi shows. Haha. <laughs> you just gave yourself away, old man. No. I don't think so. Okay. Whatever. Take care, old man, and stay out of trouble. You don't want to end up getting grounded. We'll meet again. Can't wait. You're cursed! Well, you can't deny it now. You just said it. I heard you. Said what? Why are you torturing me like this? I didn't do anything. Not yet, but you will. Oh, God. I know you're kind. I have my own problems, too, you know. My boss and my landlord are boneheads, and they're both pissed at me. And if I don't deal with them soon, I might end up living down here with you. If knowledge is power and power corrupts, how will humankind ever survive? Oh my god, those lame sayings again, really? Aren't you supposed to pay a copyright on them or something? Not me. Okay, great. So in summary, you're a bum and I'm cursed. Yes. Aha! Didn't you say you knew nothing about it? That was just an opinion. I think you're cursed and I can help you. Are we talking about an exorcism here? Because I could definitely be interested if we are. It's not that kind of curse. Anyway, as I was saying, I'm a business bum. So if you want more info, just call my office. Here's my card. This is a rusty old razor blade. And there's no phone number on it. Uh, mm -mm. I think I've had enough of that guy's secondhand philosophy for today. 